Welcome to our webinar today about our LVRSYS, our solution for voltage stability problems. My name is Thomas Schwarz. I'm the product manager for this product. And we are happy to tell you today how we want to solve the problems in the voltage for the future. And yeah, I give over to my my managing director, Stefan Hoppert, who was in charge for this product for the last years till he gave it over to me. And yeah, we are happy that you are came from all over the world. We have many, many participants and we are really uh, interesting about your questions in the end. Yes, so hey, hey, hello. So my name is Stefan Hoppert, as Thomas mentioned, I'm the managing director here. And um, yeah, Thomas introduced uh, myself, so I go through the next uh, 15 slides. So once uh, in advance, so this this um, webinar not it will not take one hour and a half. So we talked uh, together, so we will um, save your time, and uh, we must be through the presentation in 45 minutes and, and something about. So. Just for your information about uh, your data, if you if you have a question or something like that, your your name will be displayed all to all of the the visitors um, and attendees here. Yeah, to go briefly uh, through the agenda. So we are talking about electric uh, mobility. We are uh, talking about uh, photovoltaic systems. So we have some examples about how our system is working and handles such uh, issues like or new uh, new loads new um, uh, renewable uh, generation how to integrate them in the local and in the low voltage uh, network without you know, without uh, bringing the line expansions uh, to high and inefficient uh, cost structures so we're talking about our system how could be installed it and how um, how is the economical structure of the system and how is the uh, compared to the alternative uh, to the line expansion and uh, Thomas will also um, go to the points um, about, about the functionality and we give some practical examples at the end of the slides. So this slide is really easy and it's just an error. The error shows you it's going, it's going to increase. What does it mean? So, because there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of scenarios about renewable systems, about of photovoltaic systems, a lot of scenarios how will how it uh, will go on the next ten years, the next fifteen years. What's about energy transitions and so on and so on. And all of the slides, all of the uh, informations we have found um, the last uh, weeks, they all telling us okay, it's going to increase. So it means especially photovoltaic systems are going to increase and will be um, the energy supply unit for the future. So photovoltaic will explode in the next years, the next 10, 15 years. That should, this arrow should show you. Just to have a an, an, an small uh, example with numbers. So it's a strongly growing market. So we see it's a photovoltaic trend from Trendforce here in February last year. So we see the growing rate is more than, let's go back to 2021, it's 18%, then the growth rate was about 40% worldwide. So now last year we had um, a growth rate about 53, 54%. So that means it's really, really growing very fast worldwide. Of course, we have some regions where the, the, the growth is more and stronger. Than, than other regions, but we will see, especially in China, but also in India, um, solar um, units are very driven and it's it's increasing a lot. Of course, in Europe, Germany, Netherlands, Spain, Spain, we have some, um, some new projects, but um, the, the biggest markets for photovoltaic in the future will be the US, China and India. So it's expected. The same story to electric uh, mobility. So electric mobility is also increasing, but not in in in, in this rates uh, compared to the photovoltaic. So it's growing 
it's growing slowly, but it's it's uh, it's increasing a lot. So it means also that the numbers here of total electric vehicles in 2023 reached about 12 million cars. So 12 million cars compared to all of the cars worldwide with 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 combustion engine, it's it's nothing. But you can see and you can feel um, where where the story goes on, and also with electric mobility the price of electric cars are going down and down and down and will be more and more attractive to all over the world for users yeah just uh, to inform what what's worldwide uh, ongoing and uh, what does the news um, say so we have found um, if, if you go to the internet and, and do a, um, a just a short research about what the news and the newspapers are saying and of course worldwide there are some actions here in Greece, power grid and risk blackout so there are also some fears so also in the EU the growing demands puts electricity at the grid under pressure and yesterday I also searched um, for example in India even Adani is the um, it's the yeah it's a billionaire in India it's the the yeah the man and the group with the with the it's it's the it's the high with the most property. It's the man with the most property in India, and maybe also in the he's belong the first five members of of billionaires worldwide. And he says uh, he's investing more than seventy percent of his total investment in green energy resources. So that means so even in India, it's it's also increasing a lot. What does it mean? What does these kind of stories mean to the grid levels? So, and to all of the grid levels. And we see that the voltage, not, not a power, we're talking here about the voltage. And the voltage is fluctuating in all of the grid levels. It means in the high voltage level, in the medium voltage level, and especially in the low voltage level. And our solution is made especially for the low voltage level. So we are facing, our customers says, facing issues in the low voltage level with voltage stability and our system is solving it's it's um, yeah it's one um, a grid solution for the future which is solving voltage fluctuations in the low voltage but um, just to introduce here um, uh, for the first step the system our system is solving some voltage issues in the low voltage grid so what we have seen also with our first pilot projects, we have seen um, a lot of grids where voltage was fluctuating a lot. So here you can see we have a uh, night and day curve. So it means uh, a high penetrated uh, grid with photovoltaic. Um, so you see in the daytime, the voltage um, increased up to 250 volt and during the night the voltage was at a normal level and we have seen a lot of such grids here especially in germany or in, in the central of europe and that was also our reason why we have started um, facing um, photovoltaic issues and and um, went deep to the grid where we uh, solved such um, um, yeah, such um, curves and you can see also here um, we are not only controlling the voltage, so we also increase the stability in the, uh, the balance of the grid. So our system individual controls, um, yeah, is, is an individual controlling system. So every phase, each phase is individual controlled. <clears throat> what does it mean when customers, utilities, face some issues with voltage stability. So the most of them in a classical way, the most of them, of course, they think about costs. What, what, what are the costs to handle such issues in the future? And the most of them are thinking in a classical way, means line expansions or new transformer stations. And line expansions, new transformer stations, of course, it's really, really cost um, intensive. And also the personnel here must be there. So it's a planning and, a, and approval concept. It takes years to got um, the, the permission also from, 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 um, from government and from uh, local governments to, to, to um, accept such, such expansion of grids. 
So and, and at the end, it doesn't really solve the real issue. So it doesn't really solve the voltage fluctuating. It just improves and increases the short circuit power of the grid. And that means it will mitigate a little bit the voltage increase of a photovoltaic system, but does not really solve the real issue. So, and, and that's just a question for you, for utilities especially. Um, when you go for line expansion, that means you must have a current or a power problem. But if you face or if you have um, re realized and recognized um, power issue, then you have to really often uh, fuse blown in the low voltage um, grid. But the most of, of utilities, the most of the customer do not say us, okay, I have some issues with the power because permanently the fuse is blown out. So therefore, please take a look to the voltage and to the current in a divided way and go for um, voltage um, solution in a different um, in a different story compared to the um, to the current. So here, of course, it's absolutely we are our alternative solution with LBSS. Here it's it's a first picture. You see it's a small outdoor cabinet here for for utilities, which um, handles voltage fluctuations. Yeah, just to say something about the functionality because functionality of the system it's really easy explained. So it means the system takes a voltage you can see here on the left side of the graph and of the picture. It's an, an unbalanced and, and fluctuating voltage on the left side. And after our system's installation, you can see what our system is doing to the voltage, to, to the voltage behavior. You can see here it's then it's a balanced and a controlled um, voltage in. So system is not going direct to 230 volt. It's not a goal. The goal is to, to keep the voltage between limits. So that means it's settable. It's, it's parameter, it's our parameters. So it's parameter sizable. So you see, we have a reference value and we have a tolerance limit um, plus and tolerance limit, uh, limit li minus, and the system keeps the voltage then between these limits. And that's, that's it, it's the behavior. Of course, we have some timing parameters. What's the reaction uh, durance of the system? What is it's about impedance functionality? Of course, we have some, some um, more parameters, but to explain how the system works, this graphic shows you yeah, in, in total what the system is doing. Just um, for the timing parameter, and what is the system doing when the voltage exceeds a limit? Let's do a, um, a short example. When the voltage here, it's a single phase diagram. When the voltage exceeds here the limit by one volt, and we have, we have the timing parameter set to one volt second, because that's a timing parameter. If the timing parameter is one volt second, so that means if the voltage exceeds by one volt, the controller takes one second to react. So other example is if the voltage goes one half a volt, exceed the limit half a volt, then controller needs uh, takes two seconds to react. So that's the timing behavior. One of the most important things and advantage of our system is that the system and the low voltage um, expansion could be really um, flexible. So it's a flexible solution. This, the next slides should show you how flexible our solution is and how to avoid a lot of and high costs of grid expansions. Of course, in the future, when the story is going on, it means it means when the photovoltaic is increasing and increasing and increasing, the low voltage grids, of course, they run out about current and power. Then you have to expand the lines. Then you have to uh, bring new dis uh, distribution um, st uh, stations there because you have a current issue then. But up to this point, you can save a lot of cost if you're using our flexible solution. So that means just to assume 
uh, it was last year, to assume we have uh, last year 2023. And in 2025, um, a normal origin grid. We have to assume 2025, we have uh, in this grid two new households um, yeah, that bring out broad sort of uh, photovoltaic inverters in the grid. So, and then we have maybe a voltage stability issues here exactly to the point where this, this arrow is. So 2025. So what, what is the solution for the most of the utilities? They say, okay, if, if there's a voltage stability issue, I do line expansion. So I fix it classic in a classical way. So of course it's, it's, it's an inefficient method, but here to, um, to, to, to come here clear to the point, you see, okay, we, we, we bring here a new centralized station distribution um, transformer. Of course, then the voltage stability issues solved. But you could do the same. You can you can also solve the voltage stability issue with our system. So to avoid bringing a centralized station in the grid, you can also take our system to to close to solve the voltage stability issue. So then you win some time. So it means you win some time. So we here in 2020. 2025, so we go forward to 2027. So we are assuming. So that means 2027. It could be that in a different area of the grid, there were more than photovoltaic uh, solutions. No more, more um, households um, decided to go for photovoltaic. Maybe there are some photovoltaic issues in. Maybe there are some, some photovoltaic issues in a different area of the grid. So what to do? Utility no, okay, fix, uh, fix it classical way. We go for, we go for, let's, let's go for like this. We go for a next um, the centralized uh, station. So they fixed it twice in 2027 with centralized stations. Of course, it's, it's, uh, it's a hard, it's a hard compare, but it should bring to the point if you go classical way. So to go back here. If we have fixed the first photovoltaic stability issue with LVSS and also with this kind of grid, we will have the um, stability issue in 2027 with LVSS in this area, of course. But then compared to centralized station, we can take LVSS here out and we um, use centralized station here. And we, um, here we, you can see we used system LVSS as a flexible solution. Here we found out that now we will have not only a voltage issue, now because of a lot of photovoltaic increase, we also have a current and a power issue and that means we have to expand the grid. But compared to, um, to the alternative, to, compared to the classical way here, we expanded the grid just once and not twice. So in, in, the, in the classical way, we had here and here a centralized station. And then we can take LVSS here out of it and bring, bring it to another grid where we have the same issues. So that means here with this kind of flexible solution, we save a lot of money for utilities. And that means, of course, LVSS avoids a lot of unnecessary investments. And we, you use LVSS in new field application. And here, of course, um, we have uh, generated here new power capacity. So here it's the first um, we have a first a big picture of, of our system outdoor in an open way. And here it's the time uh, for me to say and to say thank you for the attention up to here. And I hand over to, to Thomas. Thank you, Stefan. So, hello. Um, this is our system. We can see here the outdoor cabinet and our target during the development was that it's it's mainly practical for the utilities 
So it, it must be easy to use, easy to install and easy to handle. So on the right side here, you can see our NH disconnectors. They, they are mainly in Europe, they are, are used as a standard product and to connect the cables and to distribute it in the low voltage grid. And on the right side is our regulation part. So here it's special protected against for the electronics that they can last forever. And the only, only points where somebody has to work on is this switch to switch it on and normally the disconnectors. So if somebody is not keen to see electronics or afraid, then he just has to switch on the system. And here is a short manual how to handle this NH disconnectors. If the green light is on, everything is fine. So for us, it was important that if somebody is in front of the system, he's not afraid and that all our systems look more or less the same. So we have always the same structure. We have one electronical cabinet, which is separated and the disconnectors. We can build it up in different cabinets, aluminum, concrete base. So we have a big variety. And because of this model, modular basis, we can also be flexible and help you which the, the solution you want to have. So this is our, our outdoor system. The same principle and system we have for indoor solutions. Here it looks a bit different because there is not no need for having an extra cabinet inside the cabinet to protect the electronics because yeah there is a different environment around the system. So here we can see the electronics which are inside. This is our controller. This is the our main focus, our development which we have done, and the rest is standard components. Below here is the connection point. So you see normal clamps you can. Uh, connected with frame clamps or uh, cable locks, it's all possible. Here is the indoor in input side and here the output side. So it's quite easy. The system will be installed. You, you set up the cabinet. Everything is included. So you just connect the cables and you can switch it on. And the system is ready for use. So for us, it's, it's always important to have a good feeling for the customer. Is that okay? It's easy to handle. I can do it without a special training. It's just connection of cables and then it can work. So it's also our, our feeling that and the response from the from the grid that it's easy to handle and you can solve the problems with it. So for indoor applications, it's more for industrial side or if it's close to the transformer station where you have anyway a housing, then we use this system to, to solve the voltage problems there. For the installation, we, we can see here on the left side, an aluminum cabinet. It looks a bit different to the GRP cabinet, but it's mainly the same. So we have again, NH disconnectors in different sizes, a, a little bit bigger indoor inside cabinet, and yeah the switch and here in the basement you can almost see it there is a transformer block that's also the biggest advantage for us to have it modular that we can change from each power rate the transformer and the cabinet but it all looks the same so you can have the same principle from 32 amps till 910 amps it, it mainly looks the same, just the dimensions are different. And on the left side, you see the, the picture. Here is the transformer block below the control cabinet. It will be connected with our control cabinet and with the, with the NH disconnectors. And also here is the connection from the grid one time and the other time for the output. And then the system is working. So you make four connections to the to the disconnectors and then the system can start so it's it's quite easy to to install and 
for us, it, it, it's like you can do it on your own. So you have done it the first time, the next systems will be always installed from yourself and we don't have to, to in, involve us because it's so easy. Here, some more examples. So we, we also have pole mount systems. We can see here on the right side, there's a guy on the pole installing a single phase module. We have it also for three phase because sometimes, yeah, it's, it's not that easy to have a space where you can install it or you have overhead lines. Then the, the, the pole mount system is the right solution. Here we see a small GRP cabinet below one pole so we come down and then we go up again it's it's also fine if you have possibility to install it here or just normal grp cabinets in the field here we can see the the transformer how it looks when it's in the base so you see here the cables can be connected and yeah it's easy to handle here we have crane locks to put the transformer in so if because it's too heavy to handle it by hand, but with a crane, it's it's not a problem. And you you also now can can think about some questions for the systems because, yeah, we we are keen to see what you're thinking about. Um, besides this, now we come to the point where we say, okay, some applications for us. It's it's from the beginning of our system we have still the same challenges to solve. Um, so one, the biggest point is the photovoltaic systems because they are new, they are deep inside the grid and they, they affect all the grid levels. So they, if they are in the medium voltage side, they also affect the low voltage grid. But if they are deep in the low voltage grid, it also affects the voltage in the low voltage and there is our system a good solution. So here we have, for example, an LV assist to control the to 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 yeah encourage the the grid to have it the photovoltaic installation. So here we have the feed in from the grid towards the photovoltaic. It's this orange line, and here we have the LV assist. The, the photovoltaic is on both sides connected. And the problem would be that the cable is quite long, about 500 meters. And to have the voltage drop along this line, not too high, you could either install more parallel cables or you can solve the voltage with our system. Like Stefan said, it's, it's mainly, it's in the low voltage grid, it's not the problem, the current is too high, which you would realize when the fuse is getting blown it's mainly a voltage problem that the inverters stop working because the voltage is too high. They say, OK, stop. The customer calls the utility and say, I have my, my, my PV system is not feeding into the grid or I cannot use it. And then you have to solve it. So here our system would be a good solution. The voltage in this point will, would look like this. Here you see the, the three phases going up and down it's it's also insymmetric so even one phase is, is lower than the other but it goes up to 235 volts which is 10 percent this is in europe is the allowed amount which is above but we have here that all around the world it's it's everywhere the same problem even if you have not a regulation that it's it's 10 percent plus you still is if the voltage is too high and the customers are not satisfied because the system is not working or even if if they have the possibility to install a converter which is maybe not that robust or not made for the current uh, for the accurate voltage level then it gets destroyed and the customer is complaining and therefore our system would be a solution Another point in the future, because the global warming is, is facing us all, so air conditioning is in, in more and more parts of the world, it's a, it's a topic. What, what is the, the effect of, of air conditioning? Yeah, of course, it consumes a lot of power because 
all the ventilation and the heat pumps they have to get rid of the of the hot air inside and they need a lot of power this will lead to a changing in the in the current and in the in the in the voltage in the grid so here you can see the voltage fluctuation during the day it the, the power goes up because here all the, the air conditioners are working and the voltage goes down so the same after in the in the evening there is no no not that much heat uh, cooling needed so the voltage goes up again and the same the next day so this also can be solved if the voltage is too low we can regulate it up so it goes in both directions and it controls the voltage another point for systems for our system is that there are more and more electromobility in the grid here we see a, a small plug in of the of the electrical car and yeah well, what happens everybody goes to work nobody is at home the photovoltaic is feeding into the grid nobody uses it and in the evening everybody comes home with the electrical vehicles and connect it then they want to charge it if you have a rural area and you have big electrical cars they can charge a lot of of power they need to to charge and they want to charge fast so that's why the voltage in the grids get lower and here we can see how, how it looks like from our measurements so the voltage was quite stable during the day and then somebody connects his car and the voltage drops and now you can imagine this is just one car which was connected if you have like several cars in the neighborhood the voltage would go really low and if the voltage is too low it would mean that the car either take quite long to charge or even don't charge because it says it's under water under voltage and we we don't charge so there will be a real pressure on the grid which can be also solved with our system so we, we are coming closer to the conclusion and now we we, we uh, yeah we, we are pleased to hear some questions from your side we because it, it's also important for us to see if it's needed and and what what is the the keen points for you so our lvsis is yeah postponing the investment in the grid makes it stable and helps you to integrate more photovoltaic electric vehicles air conditioning into the grid and have a quick solution without expanding the line and building new transformer stations which is a, a big investment and it's it's a fixed investment for the future so now now we come to the point the questions um yeah we already have one question i think just have two oh we have some so we have to make it bigger okay will we receive the webinar presentation later of course our colleague is distributing our presentation and you can also see it online again generally who is supposed to install lvss utility or customers yeah that's an interesting point um in europe it's it's always the, the the demand on the utilities if you have a, a bad voltage or for example the voltage is too low the utilities are in the point that they have to solve it sometimes we also have it that they say okay you want to install a photovoltaic system on your roof it's we, we can say it's not possible because we have our regulations and then the customer can say okay it's i want to have it 
and I can install it with this LVSys without a line expansion because for the line expansion, always the regulations are quite high in some countries. But we also see it now that the, gov the politics are going more into pushing the utilities to say, okay, you have to find a solution. It's, it's not the customer to, to invest in this. So, so you have to bring it and he is allowed to in install. Everybody is allowed to install. So you bring the solution. So also something, I think that the way goes more to the utilities instead of the customers, but there are still some points of the customers. So this equipment can be used for other applications where there are no renewable energy to regulate the voltage. Yes, of course, it, it can be used in different uh, places of the grid, especially for industry sectors. There is no renewable, but it's big power demand and the voltage could drop. So the voltage can be regulated if, or even if there is an over voltage problem, for example, at the transformer stations, our system is used to protect the, the auxiliary, the, the own consumption of the, cons, uh, the transformer station, and they, they provide there a good stable voltage that the, the devices afterwards get not harmed. Reactive power in the grid has any effect on the operations of the LVSs. Reaction, reactive power, our system is, is robust. It, it will not be affected for any kind. We, we, we use transformer to control it, which we switch on and off. And that's why it's, it's so robust and it will not be affected from the reactive power. So I hand over now a question to my colleague. Will a one to 10 millisecond version version be developed, particular for industry sectors, if required for very fast voltage dips. So you can, so Stefan, you want to? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thomas, uh, so, uh, I, I will give you a break. <laughs> so we are thinking about it because at the moment up to, up to now so um, we are prepared for the utility market so it means because of the upcoming issues like uh, photovoltaic and electric mobility because in in the past also our company is especially uh, there for utilities utilities are our, is our main market at the moment but of course we can think about it also to handle 10 millisecond uh, voltage dips and like that so we are um, maybe working on it when we when we see such uh, such devices in our strategy meeting so we will have some strategy meetings this year and we will think about it because we also see that there is a market for us for for this kind of of systems and maybe also a market for combined systems so we can talk about voltage um, stability issues plus um 10 milliseconds um avoiding systems like um yeah or, or we also handle we also think about to handle the 10 milliseconds voltage dips maybe in combination with a system next question why are the transformers below the cabinet so yeah it's easy explained because our transformers are below the cabinet because of the high weight so that means so we we, our cost has to go and had to go down in the, in, the, in the past. That means we use and we can use standardized cabinets, standardized GRP cabinets only when the weight of the transformers is out of the system. That means that's, that's a real issue why we use the transformers in the, as a block because of the uh, humidity and water and like that and because of the weight and because of the space so our system compared to, to competitors it's a really really small size system and that depends and decides in a lot of markets because there is no space for this kind of system so our goal was to develop a, a normal um, system like a normal distribution street cabinet and transformer to bring it in the in the in the base 
um, helped to do that. Thank you. Are you already supplying in Africa and where? Or is there a difficulty there? No, we are also supplying in Africa and we have also a special partner in Africa. So our, um, our uh, former managing director for sales here at Aivale, um, he, is, he is busy in Africa and, and he is also um, prepared to help a lot of or to help the customers in Africa. What is the response time for a system in fluctuation? And the maximum KVA rating. So the response time at the moment, the fastest we can do is 30 milliseconds. So as the, the question before, if we can handle also shorter sacks from one to 10 milliseconds, until now it's just after the 30 milliseconds we are reacting. And yeah, the, the biggest KVA rating is depending for indoor or outdoor applications for outdoor we are 630 kva for 400 volt face to face so we, we now transformed it more because to to the current so it's, it's 910 amps because in different voltage in different areas of the world there are different voltages so that's why we were more focusing on the current so it's this is for outdoor applications and for indoor applications, we go up to 2,500 kVA. And yeah, of course, we can also handle 525 volts. Could you explain us the impedance feature for the PV system? Yeah, the, the impedance function for the PV system is that you can, you have like a, a line after the LVR assist. So the LVR assist is installed somewhere in the grid, and you know that in the end, for example, 100 meter after the LVR assist, there is your voltage problem because there is an installation for a PV system. Then you can include the impedance, and through the color measurement and the impedance you included, we calculate how the voltage dip drops for loads or in, is increased from photovoltaic till the end of the load and that's how we can regulate it at the end of the line or at the point in the grid where you want to control it so you can more or you, you're more flexible to install the system in the grid what is the response time again uh, does installation of this change the system impedance? Stefan, I hand over to you. Yes, so no, not, not really, a, li a little bit. So to make an, a small um, example to, yeah, to, to, um, to have it in, in, in imagination. So it means um, when you have a short circuit power, like a 10 kilo amp, for, just for example, um, without our system, and then after installing our system, the short circuit current after our system will be 9.97 kiloamps. So it's just 0.03% of the impedance change of the grid. So it's almost nothing. So um, it's, it's um, explained due to our principle because we use the transformers in serial and with, with this kind of principle, we do not really um, influence the impedance of the grid. Okay, next question. You are using conventional transformers. Why you don't use power electronic systems? Yeah, it's, the explanation here is because our, a lot, our main advantage, the main advantage of the system is the power loss. So that means power loss here, efficiency rate. So we did not talk about efficiency like uh, up to now so efficiency of our system is about 99.7 percent so that means just to make a small example if we are talking about a 100 kva system 100 percent load to to calculate it easy and we have a power loss about two percent means 98 percent efficiency 98 percent efficiency sounds like a lot but that means you have a power loss like of two kilowatts. 
two kilowatts multiply with 24 hours a day, multiply with 365 days a year, multiply maybe with 10 cents per kilowatt hour. That means a lot of operational costs. And therefore, our um, investment and developments here went to the, the best and the highest efficiency system we could build. And that means also avoiding um, avoiding inverters because the inverter does not have 99.7% power efficiency. What, what about harmonics and supraharmonics? Does it affect the LVSs? So it's not affecting the system. So system is, is robust, means also for industrial application it's robust. And um, if the frequency rate is 50 hertz or 60 hertz, it's, it's, a, it's plus minus stable, then um, we do not have any um, effects on the grid with, uh, with uh, harmonics. How can we evaluate where to install the LVSs in the grid? So here it's it's a it's a it's a it's a difficult question, and therefore we offer so our support team here, especially Thomas and his team, offers um, yeah let's let's call it a calculation tool, a really easy handling calculation tool with with help of of our support and of our sales guides, and to because it's a new issue, it's a new topic, when um, utilities start to think about. Uh, such a system, they always, they very often use our support team. But if they have done it once or twice, it's really easy for them to calculate it by themselves. And so it's here always our offer to you. Please contact us so we will help you from, from the beginning. Is the system installed in parallel or in series? So our system, the transformers are in series of your lines. So that's why you connect the input side and the output side. And in between are our transformer to regulate it. So the same question, does it affect the short circuit impedance, uh, short circuit current of the, of the whole system? If you calculate the, the transformer, so because we just have some windings inside this line application, we just affect a small, percentage of the short circuit current. So if you have the UK of our system, it's 0.3%. And compare with a normal transformer, which distributes the whole, it's 3.3% up to 5%. So our affection of the short circuit current is quite low. What is the largest, largest regulation amplitude? So here we go. The, the standard regulation application is 6%, 8, 10, or 12, but it also goes up to 24%. So we, we make our regulation in steps. So we, we for example, if we have the 10% system, the first step would be 2.5%, 5, 7.5, and 10%. And in these steps, we can regulate it. If you get bigger steps, for example, 24 or 20%, then you have, of course, bigger steps. So you have 5%, 10, 15, and 20%. What is the largest? Uh, I missed the first part. Can you make the introduction? But you can see it in the video. So if you have some more questions, you can also come. Do you have any picture of the smallest LVSs? Um, come to us. We, we write a mail to us, we can send you the pictures. What is the supply capacity, the smallest and largest ut units available? The supply capacity. So the, the smallest systems we are building is 35 amps. And the smallest would be 35 amps, uh, 32 amps with plus minus 6%. So it's it can be handled in a small cabinet for Pulma systems, for example. The sizes, you can find all the sizes of the cabinets in our data sheets on the, in, in our web page. If you go to downloads and low voltage systems, then you find all the, the dimensions of the different sizes. We are already several LVSs in the low voltage grid and FET satisfied. 
our customers are satisfied, we use it mainly to postponing the investment. I saw the LVSS has some kind of remote access. Is it only for reading data or you can also change the configuration? Can we get some warning? Yes, of course. So, so with our system, you have a Mos Modbus connection is possible or a T104. And with this communication, you can change the parameters, you can read out the logbook, or you also get some warning if you have over voltage or under voltage. And just just saying, so thank you for this this this, this statement because that's that's the issue here. So we we are um, growing and growing with this kind of systems, and we are growing with especially with satisfied customers. And that's our most most important 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 point to to gather here um, satisfies satisfied customer and and that's a really nice feedback for us. Thank you for that. Thank you. What is the minimum percentage of the regulation? We already have it. It's plus minus six percent, and it's it's one point five percent steps. What is the technology behind the solution? So. We, we use thyristors to control the transformers. So we have inline transformers, which we switch on and off, and we can also control it if, if the, the voltage get increased or decreased. If you need more, if you want to understand how our system works with the thyristors, yeah, we, we can also come back to us afterwards. I think this is too, too much now into techniques. What is the benefit of installing the LVSS instead that of change for new transformers? I think the, the main the main profit for the utility is that you're postponing your investment. You just invest when it's necessary, and to install a, a whole transformer station is a really big effort. It's here in Germany they say it needs one year to get one from the point you say i need a station till you get it for our system it's it's you can ha easily handle it it's installed without one or two days maximum and then the problem is solved so you can solve quickly problems and then you have time to to think about it where is the investment necessary and then you just postpone it to the point where it's where it's needed so Thomas, let, let me add something because it, it's a really interesting uh, question. Also, we have the same question to what is the advantage to line expansions? So that means um, if you have in mind to do line expansions instead of investing in our system, that means if you dig a hole and, and uh, you, you take a new line and bring it in, into the, the ground, the investment then is done and the investment is done for the next 40 years. So the line is there. You do not dig a hole again and take and grab the line and bring the line to a different uh, to a different uh, grid. So that's the flexible solution we have meant. So that means take our system. So investment is not done, especially here for this kind of grid. Investment is flexible. You can use it and bring it, take it away to another to another grid, and you can it. It's it's not really comparable to to the classical way. The installation of such a system increases the current of the network. Yes, it increases a little bit, but just because of the efficiency. So if we have an efficiency of 99.5 or 8%, then the, the increase of the additional current is really low. And even if you if you increase the voltage, if you have a too low voltage, you still more or less compensate it if you want to, but the increase of the current is really low. How many systems do you have installed already? So I think we are more, we, we have now installed more than 500 systems in all around the world. Yeah, and yeah, they work all fine. I want, want yeah. something to add. So, um, so we are more than 1000 systems because last year we, we, can, we can, to be honest and open like that. So last year we had more than 350 devices just in one year. So we're talking about more than 1,000 systems um, worldwide. What is the impact on the short circuit level that we already had? 
should inverters operate with the QV protocol to regulate the current just as effective as your system? So you, you mean that the, that the inverter, the, the inverters which have a, yeah, QV protocol? So yeah. Let, 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 me, let me add that. So here the, the, the issue is um, the inverters, the inverters have set points to, to bring reactive power for voltage controlling to the grid. But reactive power means the lines will be more and, uh, and, and more utilized. So and we absolutely avoid this effect by uh, controlling the voltage. And that means you can, the reactive power control can be completely avoided in the inverters. So that means reactive power will be go down and the utilization of the grid will be will also go down. What is the most common regulation range in Europe? So I, I would say it's it's plus minus eight percent or ten percent. And this solves yeah, if, if you have a regulation up to ten percent, it, it solves the problem. And even if, if it goes then lower, then 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 you still have a big advantage and there is no problem at the customer side anymore. Do you have the simulation program for the to compare it with your calculation? So we we this this calculation program we are using, it's just for internal purposes. So but we can support you if you have a calculation, you have a grid and you, you come to us and we, we give you the support to say, OK, this would be our solution, and then we can compare it and um, find the best way to install the LVSs. What happens when the grid is higher or lower than 24%? So yeah, if, 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 if the voltage is really too high, then also our solution cannot solve it. But for example, if you have it 24% too high, it normally it doesn't be that high for the whole time. If you have a regulation range for plus minus 12%, for example, it will regulate it down to plus 12%. And then it, it's still too high, but normally it's not, not affecting too much the devices afterwards. And it, it's just a short period. If you have it for 24% plus for the whole time, then I think there is a bigger problem in the grid, which has to be solved from the transformer side. So to, to just to yeah. add something. So um, our system works with, let me, our system works also with low voltages, but to, uh, to generate an effect, an output effect. So that means when the input voltage is plus minus 30%, so our system is there, our system is ready on, uh, and our system is helpful. But if the voltage exceeds limits of plus minus 30%, that means you have different um, actions in the grid has to be solved. That means the circuit power, short circuit power is not there, is not enough. So that means the, system, the voltage will go down more than 30%. And if the voltage is too high, of course, there must be some failure there. So if the voltage is more than plus 30% there, it, there must be some failures. So therefore, input voltage, incoming voltage, plus minus 30%. So of course, then think about a system. If limit exceeds, there are different uh, failures in the in the grid. For the Ersing system, is TNS possible? Of course. So our system, as we said, it's flexible. So and we provide you a, a system for TNS. TNC is a standard in, in Europe. TT and also IT systems. So everything is, is possible to solve. Do you provide search arrestors protection? Yes, so in, in our system, we have a standard search arrestor installed to protect the system before and after from uh, search from uh, lightnings. So I think I, we have the reference list. Just contact us, then we, we can send you a reference list. That's not a problem. And then I think we are Go to, 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 let's see the contact, Thomas. Yeah, a lot of them maybe have. So we, we we have prepared some 
more questions because we were thinking maybe there is too less but we had really a good conversation thank you all for this a lot of questions and the interesting points we have some more questions which we just talk slowly fast about it special parameter settings are necessary no there are no no the, the standard parameters they are I think mainly used for all our customers. So 95%, they just use the startup parameters and they don't, don't have to add anything on it and the system works. Service life of the LVS is so we expect to compete with a line extension and we, we don't, don't have any movable parts. So it's, it's passive cooling, no, no vans, no filters. It's just that the, the system and through the Tyristor technology, which we use as a switch, they, they cannot get problems and they should. So we plan all the components for 40 years. Maintenance needed. Is it there? There is a point for maintenance, but it's just like in normal standard cabinets. So if you have, we, we, we try to avoid all um, screws. So, but for connect the the disconnectors, of course, you have to check on the screws, but you can just handle it such a normal regulation cabinet. And is there interruption of supply in case of failure? No, there is no interruption because we have an automated bypass in case of anything in the grid. Our system will continue supplying the customer. The only difference, if there is a problem, because of overcurrent or something, then the, the customers get an unregulated voltage supply. So we have one more question now. Should we provide an earthing system? Yes, of course, you can. There is always a, a local earth needed. So yeah, you can do it like you you install it to your normal distribution cabinets with a mesh or yeah, or a, a uh, earthing root in the ground. So from the end, this is our some feedback from our customers from the grid. So we are now thanking you for hearing to us so quite long. We almost made it in one hour. So thank you. And here is our contact so in case you have anything just write me and we will help you with yeah your questions and we are looking forward to work with you so thank you for your attention bye bye thank you